What's up folks, today we're going to look at a video where a person takes a quote from Max Planck, the quantum physicist, where he mentions the word consciousness and uses that to connect the observer effect in quantum mechanics to consciousness in Hinduism. I've got a lot of comments on this. Uh, I've reacted to a couple of such videos before, but I've not specifically talked about this particular connection that a lot of videos try to make. So let's do it. So it's just going to be another reaction video then. Technically, yes, but this one's going to be a little different because unlike a video where I react live and impromptu, to a video right then and there. This one's a little more scripted. I've put a lot more thoughts into what comments I make and I think there's a lot of value in that. And yeah, that's what this video is. I get a lot of such videos in my DMs. Feel free to send me more. And I think uh, some of these videos require a good amount of elaboration and thoughts into the comments and so yeah i've decided to do that without further ado my name's pranav you're watching dd rational let's begin this video is brought to you by my supporters on patreon buy me a coffee nasio and youtube if you wish to support me you can find the links below max Planck said consciousness is the fabric of the cosmos woven into the very essence of existence Max Planck is the father of quantum theory, which revealed that at the most fundamental level, the universe is not made up of solid matter, but out of energy and probabilities. Now, before I begin, I must say that I've got nothing against this person. And he probably watched one of one such video, one of these videos where such ideas are being expressed and he probably fell into that rabbit hole and made this video. That's what I think, because there are a lot of such videos, most of them that use that quote by Oppenheimer from the Bhagavad Gita, which he quoted when he saw the first nuclear bomb testing. There are also similar quotes by Schrodinger, Heisenberg. I think Schrodinger said some things about Vedanta. Anyway, I made a detailed video about many such quotes and what's the flaw in making these interpretations from them. If you want that video, I've linked it down below also. Now, all these videos, their objective or what they're trying to achieve is the same. They want to try and get a tag of science into whatever ideas they want to say. And it's usually an idea from their religion. So once they get a tag of science, and that automatically means a kind of validation, they usually present that idea from their religion as something with a lot of validation. Hey, this is scientific. Hey, this is a valid idea. Have you thought of it like this? Now, why do they use science exactly? Because science already has centuries of proof. It's something we know that works. Nobody's going to say, hey, science doesn't work. No, our modern lives are so convenient thanks to science and its products, products of technology, which in turn is a product of science. But using this tag of science is something a lot of people usually do to validate an idea from their religion. And it's not really exclusive to Hinduism. You see a lot of it in Hinduism. But say, for example, you see it in Quran also. Just the other day, I was talking to an ex-Muslim friend of mine. And he mentioned how Quran, the verses in Quran supposedly mention embryology. Because it says something about the fetus, human beings before they're born. I don't know specifics. If there are Muslims or ex-Muslims watching the video right now, put it down in the comments. Now, let's talk about this video. He found that when we observe or measure something, it changes from a probability into a definitive state. This made him think that consciousness might be a fundamental aspect of our universe, just like how time and space are fundamental aspects of our reality. Even before we get to the crux of the idea he's going to talk about, there are already flaws that you can spot. There's an appeal to the authority of Max Planck here. See, he may have been a great scientist. He may have made some incredible achievements in helping physics progress. and But that doesn't mean every single thing he said is correct and is of ultimate value. This is a quote that you've taken out of context to make an interpretation and you're appealing to his authority to make your interpretation. There are no authorities in science. He isn't, uh, you know, the ultimate source of truth or whatever. Now, this particular quote that he mentions, 
I tried looking really hard for it because it will make great content for me. But I wasn't able to find this quote. There is another quote where he mentions consciousness. But if you are able to find this specific quote mentioned in the video, let me know. But either way, assuming he did make such a quotation, there's a problem immediately. Can you spot it? This is too vague. There's no way that this is anything scientific or even academic. Because if something has to be scientific or academic, it has to be speaking very specifically and very to the point about something. Not in such vague metaphors, in a poetic manner about some literature, sense, meaning of something. No, that you don't find that in any science or academia. The scientist writing or quoting a work of literature or quoting something, he, that sounds poetic from his inspirations. You can't conclude anything scientific from this quote. I will re-emphasize this part. Science is not something that is open to interpretation. It has to be ultra specific and to the point. If it's open to interpretation, people can make their own conclusions like this person has in this video. People making their own conclusions is not what we want as a product of science. The only reason we write books on science or textbooks on science is to communicate what we've learned, convey what we've learned to the next generation to bring this knowledge forward in time. Let's now talk about exactly what's being said in the video. This made him think that consciousness might be a fundamental aspect of our universe, just like how time and space are fundamental aspects of our reality. He believed that consciousness might be what creates the material world rather than the other way around. Like I already said, what a lot of videos like these do is they try to connect the observer effect from quantum mechanics with consciousness, which is an idea that's spoken of a lot in Hinduism. That way, they try to connect their religion to science, get attack of science and all that good stuff, which I already mentioned. Hinduism talks about ideas like universal consciousness or the ultimate consciousness and all these things. So if the observer in observer effect is conscious, uh, then they can just make whatever interpretation about their religion that they want to make. If anyone has actually learned quantum mechanics, and I, you don't need high level degrees in uh, physics to know all this, just basic quantum mechanics, what you learn in 11th or 12th in school will do. You know that consciousness has nothing to do with the observer effect. I'll explain. Now, this is the only technical bit of the video, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Quantum mechanics is the physics of very small scale particles like subatomic particles like the electron. And it tries to model the behavior of these particles, which are very specific based on things like their energy, position, momentum, all these things. And the energy that they have is something that is imparted to them by striking them with packets of energy known as photons. Photons are particles of light and striking an electron with a photon would mean its energy is now changed and that affects its behavior. Now to observe or measure the behavior of these particles and see if they match with the predictions from the model, we have to use light. We have to strike the particle, the electron or whatever, with a photon. In other words, the act of observing the target particle changes its behavior. That is what is called the observer effect. It has nothing to do with consciousness. All you need is a photon for the observer effect. It's just called the observer effect because observing is what brings out these photons. But there's nothing here about consciousness. Once again, why do these people still make a, a an interpretation that talks about consciousness? Because consciousness is something that they can connect with their religion, with Hinduism. Next time you come across not this video necessarily, any such video which talks about quantum mechanics and consciousness, notice how they are making a big logical leap from observer to conscious observer to consciousness. That's a logical leap that they're making and that's a mistake in every single one of these videos. And to make this connection, they also mine these quotes like this person did and they forget that the quote is something poetic, something in a literature sense, not in a literal or scientific sense. Let's watch the rest of what he said in the video. This idea is based on philosophical idealism, which suggests that reality is fundamentally mental or spiritual. The cool thing is this idea of the fundamental nature of consciousness or the mental spiritual nature of the universe is ancient. 
and is found in teachings of yoga and other esoteric teachings from across the world. Now, yogic philosophy is a school within Indic philosophy from where a lot of ideas in Hinduism come from. In this specific video, he didn't mention Hinduism, but you know what I'm talking about when I say that a lot of such videos do make this connection in the context of Hinduism. That's it for this video. If you like the content I make, feel free to support me. All the support pages, I've given links below. I will see you in the next one.